Welcome. I hear you've come to hear my story. Well, it all started one morning when I'd just got back from fetching water from the well with my friends. We were all so excited about my engagement to Joseph the carpenter, who's ever so kind, and I'd started getting on with my household chores. I was sweeping and wondering what it would be like to be Joseph's wife one day, and suddenly an angel appeared watching me. That had never happened to me before. Maybe you see them all the time, but I've never seen one, never even thought about them, to be honest. In fact, I'm not sure how I knew it was an angel. I just did. Suddenly, there was a light where light ought not to be, and it got brighter and brighter and filled the room, the whitest white light that dazzled my eyes and filled my brain till I couldn't look any more, and I fell to the floor with my hands over my eyes, and I was absolutely terrified. And just when I thought I couldn't get any more frightened, a really calm voice spoke out of the light, and I nearly fainted with fear. And the voice said, Mary, you are highly favoured by God. Don't be afraid. Open your eyes. I've got something wonderful to tell you. So I peeked through my fingers and realised that in the middle of the brightness was a person with wings. And this angel, well, he told me that God had chosen me to have a baby that was going to grow up to be God's great king and save all humankind and be the Messiah that my people have been waiting for for centuries. I didn't take in that bit straight away. I mean, I just heard, you're going to have a baby. So I said, don't be silly, I can't have a baby. I'm not even married yet. And he said, don't worry, it's going to be God's baby, given to you by the Holy Spirit. Well, I didn't know what else to say, except that if an angel was really telling me that I was going to be the mother of God's son, our Messiah, then I probably shouldn't argue. So I said, OK. And the light slowly faded. And there I was, sitting on the floor, still clutching my broom and feeling a bit funny. Quite soon, I realised that I was actually pregnant. And I also realised that Joseph was not going to believe that this was God's baby. I genuinely thought I would be stoned to death. That's what they do in Nazareth if you fall pregnant outside of marriage. So I definitely wanted to keep it quiet. But obviously, you can't hide being pregnant for very long. So one day, when Joseph came to visit, I told him what had happened. He was rather upset and said he needed to think about whether he could still marry me or not, and that he needed to sleep on it. To cut a long story short, he came back the next day and he said he'd seen my angel in a dream who told him that I was telling the truth so he would marry me and take care of me and the baby. Phew! So we made plans and everything looked as if it would work out until just weeks before the baby was due to be born. The Romans messed things up. Now, I don't know if you have the Romans where you live, but around here, they are in charge of everything. If a Roman tells you to do something, you do it, or they might kill you. The Roman emperor said that every Jewish man should go with his family back to his hometown to be taxed. And so we had to go all the way to Bethlehem, which is four days' walk at least. And I could hardly walk, so Joseph's cousin lent us his donkey, and I will never forget that journey. Hot, dusty, and nearly ready to have my baby. It was terrible. And then, when we arrived in Bethlehem, there was absolutely nowhere for us to stay. 
everywhere was full. I was crying. I really thought I was going to have my baby on the street, and so did Joseph. But fortunately, someone helped us, and I ended up having that baby in a smelly old stable among the animals. We had some pretty weird visitors too, and life has never been dull ever since. But I'm chattering on. You need to be on your way. But here's something to remind you of my story. A white feather to make you think of angels. We pray. Jesus, whose mother was Mary, we pray for our families, especially those we love but cannot be with this Christmas. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. 